and welcome to another teacher talks session tonight tonight we are going to have our 58th session i know that it's it's, it's a very hot uh, summer night and it's very hot and i'm sure that uh, you are having great fun <laughs> with this hot, fun, uh, hot weather but i'm sure that tonight uh, if you are going to be with us it will be a great session tonight also and i'm sure that you are going to like it tonight uh, we are going to have a very special uh, educator just like other other sessions uh, I don't want to waste time and I just want to quickly explain about him and uh, then I will invite him he is a founder of renewable English Le renewable English and also he's a learning guide for uh, Pearson and BBC studios speak out for sustainability and also he's a, a freelance teacher teacher trainer and also content creator and Harry Waters is going to be with us tonight and I'm going to invite him and then we are going to start our session with him I'm sure it's going to be a very uh, useful session let me invite him here Hello. Hi, Harry. It's uh, good hello. Job, <laughs> by the way. Well done. You absolutely everything in there. Really good. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. And because it's you, it's these are all the things that you are doing it. So I just wanted to say before we start our live session with you, Harry, I would like to say thank you to accept my invitation to teacher talks and give this chance to us to listen to you and to learn from you and about the things that you are doing right now. Well, it's my pleasure and I'd like to say hi to everybody who's, uh, who's come along and thank you very much for inviting me. Um, as you mentioned before, it is a warm summer at the moment <laughs> and they're only yeah. getting warmer I know, so um, <laughs> yeah, thank you very much for having me. Yes, you're welcome. You're welcome, Harry. And before we start our live, our live session, I just wanted to remind something here. If you have any questions to Harry, please write them into the question part. But you can write your comments into the comment part. But if you have a question, please write it into the question part. Because maybe, exactly, we can uh, miss we can miss during the discussion maybe we can miss your question so i really don't want to miss it so that's why this is really important and here is harry and now if you are ready we can start absolutely all I right was then. Born ready. <laughs> all right wonderful so harry i i know about you but our uh, listeners would like to know about you, I'm sure. So for this, for this reason, can you tell us about yourself, please? And also a bit about your experience, too. Absolutely. So I am, as you mentioned before, a teacher, teacher trainer and content creator. Um, I've been teacher training now for about eight years. I've been teaching now for about 15 years. And I've been creating content, well, as teachers, we all know we've been creating content since the first day that we started teaching. So yeah. I've been creating content for about 15 years, but I've only been paid for it for about the last five years. Um, right. So that's something about me. I live in uh, Spain with my, my wife and daughter. And at the moment, my, my primary focus um, I've finally been able to kind of move to this. So as I say, I've been teaching for, for 15 years. I love teaching. I absolutely adore it. I love the classroom. I love online teaching. I love all kinds of teaching. Um, but I've been able to this year really focus my attention on kind of environmentalism and, and that side of teaching. So trying to get the most out of that. I see. It's great. Thank you, Harry. So... <clears throat> Uh, I, I thank you very much and I would like to move to another question so in uh, we know that you have lots of experiences but we have lots of questions that we are going to discuss them all so my second question is about your, uh, your own education so here is it what were uh, some uh, turning points in your own education 
Um, I think for me, what really stands out are the moments that I enjoyed my classes and the moments that I didn't enjoy my classes. So the big turning points for me were I, I had a maths teacher um, who didn't like me. I oh, can't understand really? why. Yeah. I'm a lovely guy. Um, but yeah, I, um, I was a bit of a clown at school um, and, and this teacher didn't particularly like me and she would frequently tell me that I was going to fail. Now at the time I looked back and th at the time I thought, maybe she's doing it to, you know, G me up and to make me want to pass. And then when I became a teacher and I realized I only, I've only ever like warned a few students that they might fail if they might fail. Like, but she would tell me every class, you're going to fail, you're going to fail. And obviously I wasn't her biggest fan. So I went out there and, and did really well in the exam. Um, so that was kind of a turning point for me in the way that that taught me how not to be a teacher. You know, I, I didn't know that I wanted to be a teacher at the time, but when I became a teacher, looking back at it, I was like, that's not how to be a teacher. And then I look at other classes that I really loved. And I, I remember entirely the teacher. Um, hello there. Um, sorry, somebody said hello there. Um, a, a great, excellent uh, friend of mine, actually. Wonderful. Um, so, yeah, it was those moments in the, cl the, the classes I really remember, the lessons I really remember, weren't necessarily what they were teaching, but the way they were teaching it and the way I interacted. I had, mm -hmm. I had, I remember when I had a psychology class, it was with some great friends of mine. And the fact that the teacher allowed us to all interact with each other and wasn't there stopping us talking. So those moments really stayed with me. I see. It's a great moment, I think, for you, the turning point part. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so uh, my next question is uh, this. So uh, what is your philosophy of teaching here? My philosophy of teaching stands 100% in it needs to be fun. Like, teaching wow. needs to be fun. Um, you're, you, you're not going to learn if you're not enjoying the class. Um, there, there are lots of good teachers out there who, you know, they know everything. Mm -hmm. but the, and they try and get into other into students' heads, but if a student's bored in class, they're not going to learn. So my, my philosophy really does lie on the, the, the teacher has to be enjoying this. They, they have to be, the, mm -hmm. sorry, the teacher and the student, they both have to be enjoying it in the moment. So a lot of the activities that I create, um, they start, kind of as a game that I would do, and then I see how I could fit it into the classroom, mm -hmm. rather than, sorry, rather than taking the language point and turning it into a game, I take the game and turn it into a language point. I see. That's the, that's the, the, that's the main focus that you have it. Wonderful. For me, the essence really is that the students are having fun. Now, it does depend greatly on the class, because there are some times that you just can't have too much fun, because the class is out of hand. So you need to also have the respect of the students. Mm -hmm. And students will respect you more if you also respect them. You need to listen to your students so they're going to listen to you. So for me, that's the, you know, another real key there is if you want the, your students to respect you, then you have to respect them as well. If you want them to listen to you, you have to listen to them. And that's not just for teenagers and adults, that's for little kids as well. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I've got class with seven-year-olds and they'll come in and they'll say, oh, it's my cousin's birthday tomorrow. And then, you know, a lot of teachers are like, okay, it's your cousin's birthday. But what <laughs> I make sure I go in the next class when I come back, it's like, how was your cousin's birthday party? You know, to show that you've listened. Exactly. And that way, you know, you can build that trust, you can build that respect. So when you are having fun and things get a bit too crazy, you can just bring it down a notch and say, guys, come on, let's calm down. And when you've got that respect, it almost always works. Almost always. <laughs> Not always. Not you know, you always. do have sometimes have to raise your voice a little bit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I agree. I agree with you totally. And thank you very much for this nice comment. And Harry, as you know that, you know, we as a whole world, we are in a really, you know, the facing really a bad moments with the COVID-19, you know it, it's things from almost one and a half year. And so we move from face-to-face -face education to uh, distance education or another online education. So 
uh, in this case, I really would like. Uh, uh, I wonder what are you, what do you think about this distance education? Now, I'm going to be honest here. I really like it. I really like it. But again, depending on the class, uh -huh. it's you know sometimes with younger learners, it's very, very, very difficult, and I don't. I don't think it works as well for a very, very young learner to be sat there in front of a computer. It's still possible. Now, I've seen some absolute, the, the lady who popped in before is an absolute genius. Like she does storytelling online and I've been to one of her workshops before and it's incredible how she engages these, these young students. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, like there are so many advantages to it. Um, and it's, it's finding those advantages and really using them to your benefit. So with teenagers, for example, often they can be much more withdrawn in a face-to-face -face classroom. But when they're at home, they're in their own environment, they can feel more comfortable, they can really open up. I noticed my shyer students were so much better in the online environment. And I was, you know, I was gobsmacked. I was amazed at the ability of some of these students. And also for, for adult classes, you know, Traditionally, an adult class, here in Spain at least, if they're at an academy or something like that, it's right at the end of the day. So the adult, they've, they've been at work, they've maybe gone home, eaten something very quickly, and then they've come to your class at half past eight maybe, until 10 o'clock at night. And you can see by the end of the class, you know, they're doing these, ones, they're, <laughs> they're falling asleep. But that difference when it's distance learning, when they're at home, you know, they're, they're comfortable, they don't have that extra session of having to leave the house again and go out and make sure their kids are with somebody. So they've got that confidence that they can be there and they can fully engage in the class. And if they don't want to fully engage, then again, they don't have to. So I really like distance learning. I think it has so many advantages. Um, in fact, one of my training sessions is, is called Zooming Around and it is all about ways of integrating Zoom activities into the classroom um, and making the classroom a bit more didactic, a bit more fun. But you already know me. That's, uh, that's the way I like That's the way I roll. <laughs> Great. Wonderful. Yeah, that's why. Okay. Thank you very much for your uh, ideas about the distance education. So my, my and next question is related with distance education, but not the students part. This is this time is the teacher's part, according to your observations. Like, uh, what do you think about the teacher's reaction for this process? Like, uh, according to your observation. So, from what I saw was, there was an. I was so impressed with teachers. Like first, first and foremost, the way that that we adapted as a like as a group from one day to the next, going from face to face to online. It's incredible, absolutely incredible, with absolutely no training whatsoever. So mm -hmm. at first, it was so difficult for teachers. It was this is teaching online, distance learning is it's it's a different ball game. It's so different to face to face teaching. You cannot simply take a face to face teacher and put them in front of a computer and expect the same results. It's it's just not possible. You know, it's it's not the same. Um, so there was a period of adaptation. Uh, and I saw at first there was a lot of people pushing back, you know, saying it was really difficult, it was really hard, maybe it was too hard and to suddenly be put in this situation. But, but what I saw from it was, you know, this, this adaptation that teachers slowly grew. And I yeah. saw with a lot of teachers, now particularly teachers of teens, I saw them, they noticed the advantage of it. No, it wasn't just the fact they weren't in a room with 30 different teenagers who were sweating and maybe didn't smell fantastic, but... <laughs> You know, that is one big advantage. <laughs> when they saw those, those benefits that with teenagers, they are so tech savvy, you know. Teenagers know how to, to do these things. And, and they were in there, and that was a moment, a big change I saw in teachers' attitudes, that they were there, they would hand the power over. So the, the idea of the flipped classroom, with the, the online, with the distance learning, it really came to the fore because mm -hmm. there were so many presentations, there were so many ways that students could show teachers what to do. You know, they're, you know, with the sharing screen, with the annotations on Zoom. You know, there were so many things that teachers didn't know and were learning from their students, or they were learning together at the same time. So, hello, loving my life, uh, my yeah. journey's life. Nice to see you. <laughs> hello. Um, so, yeah, I think there was an initial pushback 
Um, but he's been adapted. I've never seen um, a profession adapt so quickly to something. I've never seen anything like it in my life. Um, it's absolutely incredible. And I have to say, hats off to all teachers because I don't know, I don't know how we did it. I don't know how, but we did. And we did a really good job. Yeah, that's why we are teachers, I think, adapting to something new very quickly. <laughs> yeah. All right, great. Thank you very much, Harry, for uh, this nice comment about this uh, about this situation. Okay, uh, my next question is about your. I think you have a kind of a publishing company, uh, if I'm not wrong, Renewable English. Well, it's more. Well, it, I, I wish I was a publishing company. Um, it's more like a. It's an online. It's an an All online right. learning course. Oh, okay, um, online learning course. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, I, I like to refer to it as a, yeah, a free online learning climate change awareness course. Oh, I see. Um, and yeah, it's uh, it's something that I've been committed to starting for a long time, but uh -huh. you know, right. as a teacher, never got round to it. Was never able to. Mm -hmm. I so, see. so I, I do now. I I do create materials um, and I create lessons and I have live lessons that you can you can come on on YouTube, although the end of the first series just happened, so you have to wait until September to come back to those. Oh, I see. Um, but yeah, yeah. It's, it's basically, the, the idea behind it came oof, a long time ago. I've always wanted to do something to do with environmentalism in the classroom, and I found that textbooks, now I can see behind you, you've got a stack of textbooks, yeah. you can see yeah, behind I me, I've got a stack of textbooks. There's not enough about, um, well, any social justice issue or environmental justice, isn't there? There's nothing, you know, there's one unit usually, and that one unit is, I don't know, maybe it's recycling, or maybe it's the ice caps are melting, mm -hmm. or it's, it's one thing, and it's usually doom and gloom. It's usually everything's bad, we're all gonna die. So students would get to that stage of the book, and their sudden reaction would be, ah. Oh. <laughs> climate change again oh this is so boring and i was just like it's not boring it's super important but the way the materials are approaching it make it feel boring so what i did with the renewable english was i tried to take a different spin on it and what i've done is i've taken 12 kind of units from the book so i've looked at the home i've looked at fashion i've looked at school i've looked at celebrations those different things that you do in the book uh -huh. that are in a traditional textbook, and I've focused them on sustainability. I've focused them on environmentalism. So you know, at the end of every unit, you've usually got that culture unit or something like that. It's a bit like one of those, but for climate change. And they focus on the positives. Mm -hmm. It's a very, it's a very, I really wonder, like the, the, the books that you have it over here, the, all the materials, I have checked them, they're really brilliant, really. I have a chance to check them. It's really great. And <laughs> all right. And I was going to ask the question about it, but you have already, uh, you know, talk about it. Uh, I'm like, really sorry. I, I get, when I start talking, I get really passionate. No, no, and sometimes it's I can't stop. It's, it's wonderful. Like I was going to ask you, what was your purpose to set Renewable English, and why did you choose this name? And you have already uh, given this answer here. And my next question, again, related with uh, Renewable English. So what kind of support do you provide to the teachers with Renewable English? Well, that's, that's great. So there are obviously the materials, the, mm -hmm. there's the teacher's materials and the student's materials. So like the, the PowerPoint and the worksheet that you could use for the class. Um, and obviously, if you look on Instagram, as you can see here, yeah. uh, if you look on Instagram, so every unit I've done, there, there are videos for, of the unfun facts, which are also all on the YouTube channel. They're all on the page as well, so there's videos of that. Um, there are videos of the lessons as well. So each lesson is half an hour. So, you know, if you're, in, you're on one of those days and you think, do you know what? I just can't today. I can't do it. <laughs> there you go. You've got a lesson there, ready, prepared. There's the students' materials, the teachers' materials. But what I also oh, like to do, and what, I've, what I really love, um, I love the interaction with, with students, I love the interaction with teachers. So I also provide what's called, well, it's called Renewable English on the road, where if you live near me, 
then I'll go to your school, I'll go to your academy, and I'll do a workshop with the students, with the teachers. If you don't live as near to me, there's this wonderful invention called the internet, where I can come into your classrooms through Zoom, through Meet, through Teams, through whatever you like, and I can come in and I can do a workshop that way. So I've done it with um, a few schools in Mexico. There's a school in Italy that I work with as well, where we basically go in and we have a session, yeah. one, two or three sessions, and it can be first to look at you know, our carbon footprint and what we can do as individuals. And then we can look at what we can do as a collective and just a few ways of of starting people on their climate journey, you know, to, to start people on that journey towards environmentalism, because it is something that's going to affect everybody. You know, we can yeah. see now that in California, in Australia, you, know, you can see the devastating effects of, of, of climate change. You can see the wildfires. This is everybody now. You know, this it is uh, it does affect disproportionately people of uh, lower income rate. That's absolutely true. Um, there are droughts in countries more traditionally that are um, of a, in the developing world. But it is affecting everybody now, and it's going to keep affecting people more and more. So it's something that I like people to know about. But that what I try and do with the sessions is not cause eco-anxiety. I don't want people in there going, Oh my God, everything's burning! Oh, everything's burning, we're all going to die! I don't want that. What I want to give are, are ways that we can help. You know, things that we can do. Things that we can do to make a difference. Things that we can do to, to stop the overproduction of plastic. Things that we can do to, to kind of slow down this massive production of, mm -hmm. of everything, really. No, I see. I totally agree with you, whatever you say, Larry, really. They are really important, and it's really, it's, you are, you know, you, I mean, you have chosen this very important uh, the part in this, in this area, really. It's really important. And uh, I'm sure that your, your materials and the things you do will help us in this uh, case. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, my next question is related again with renewable things, because as we know that you are expert about it and you have your own renewable English uh, thing. So I really wonder, is it easy to create a renewable content for each skills lessons or is it easy you can t think about it in general also i mentioned yeah, well, the lesson i think something that seneca said uh, a roman um he was a roman philosopher and he said while we teach we learn so the way you can approach it is the way you would approach any kind of any subject so if you're looking for for a speaking lesson it's, for me, it's the same way. I would approach it the same way. If I was teaching uh, a lesson about technology and I was looking for a debate or a speaking debate, I'd look for an article online. I'd ask students to maybe read that article and then talk about it. So I, could, I feel that you can do it in, in the same way with, with um, environmental ideas. You know, it's, it's, you can approach it the same way that you would approach any lesson. But the, the big difference is and one of the big fears that I've seen in teachers is they often say, I'm not an expert. You know, I'm not an environmental expert. So how can I, how can I do this? How can I teach this if I'm not an expert? Well, I'll tell you what, until I was 23, I didn't know what the past simple was in English. You know, I wasn't an expert in any of these different things. So <laughs> until I became a teacher, um, Oh, somebody's asked where I hide my teaching <laughs> yeah, materials. Hide your teaching yeah. materials. <laughs> they're all on renewableenglish.com. Um, they're all there. Help yourself. Um, yeah, so, and there are so many other, other websites that there are available. I think there's a question later on that we're going to talk about this. So I'll save that for later. I don't all want right. to take away all your questions. But <laughs> no problem. <laughs> I, don't think it's, I don't think it's a really... I don't think it's much different to creating materials for anything else. But if, you're, if you can't, there are loads of other places to find materials, which we will talk about later. <laughs> All right, then. Thank you very much, Harry. And so my uh, next question is again related with uh, the preparing the materials. Is, when you prepare, is the culture important when you prepare a material for the classroom? 
and how do you decide it? Absolutely. I think culture is vitally important. Um, for example, here in Spain, if you go into a classroom and suggest that maybe somebody should eat less meat, you know, as a way to help the, the planet, you'll instantly be met with a no. You know, I said to, I went to, I was doing a renewable English on the road and I went into a Spanish classroom um, and I said, I suggested maybe they just have lentils without chorizo, without chorizo. I and the, the shot, they looked at me as if I'd said something about their, their grandmother. They were just like, <laughs> you know, so I think you need to be aware of that. But, but one slight issue that I have with renewable English is it's aimed at the whole world. Mm -hmm. So you can't take everybody's individual culture into account. You just have to take, when I create materials, I try not to make them too extreme. You know, as an environmentalist myself, in my passion, yeah. Is extreme, you know. I have an extremist attitude. I'll be perfectly honest. You know, I, you know, I would like, you know, big things to happen. I would like there to be revolution and so on and so forth. But I know it's not realistic to go into a classroom and say, right, guys, stop eating meat, stop <laughs> drinking Coca Cola, don't buy any clothes from Primark because that's all <laughs> terrible. You can't do that. You know, it's a thing that's it's step by step. It's bit by bit. So. Um, I do kind of take those, those aspects into account um, when it comes to renewable English. Um, but in, in terms of, I do a lot of um, volunteer work with, with refugees um, from, from, from Syria, from Turkey as well. Um, and obviously there's a lot of cultural aspects that I have to take into account for those classes. Um, I did a class uh, the day before Eid. Um, and, you know, it was like, just be aware that you know, that people are going to be talking about this and, you know, that the, the ladies in the class were, were saying, oh, we had to prepare this food and this and that. And I was like, fantastic, because the food, oh, I absolutely love the food. That's something I miss about England is the food, particularly um, around Eid. It's absolutely incredible. Um, but, you know, the, the kind of, um, the feminist in me was saying, you know, it was screaming, why can't your husband's help? But you know, it's like, you know, it's not, a, it's not something you would approach. It's not that, you know, it's not the way, you know, you have to think about different cultures in the classroom. I see. Thank you very much for your suggestions and your ideas. It's great, wonderful, really. And my uh, next question, can I move? Or you will add Of course, and, and, go ahead, uh, yes. All right, wonderful. So, but, and what are your criterias to prepare an effective classroom materials? Maybe this is... Uh, you have you have said something about it, but maybe you would like to add uh, other things. Well, I like to make sure that, well, particularly with um, environmental issues or social justice issues, I like to make sure that students at the beginning of class are aware of the vocabulary because there's a lot of new vocabulary. That's a, another reason why teachers find it daunting and scary because there's so much vocabulary that the students have never come across before. Uh -huh. So I like to try and select, you know, at least, you know, five or six words that are going to come up that maybe they don't know. So if I, I can pre-teach that in a video beforehand, great. I don't always have the time for that. So usually at the start of the class, and it's the same with, with Speak Up for Sustainability as it is with Renewable English. At the very start, I like to show some vital vocabulary that we're going to talk about throughout. I see. I like to, I like to also make sure that there's video content. Um, I, th I think that listening is vital, it's so important, and I like it to be natural video content as well. Yeah. I, I don't I only like it to be, I don't only like it to be, you know, hello, my name is Harry Waters, and I am a teacher from England. You know, those, you know, you get those listenings that are just contrived and they're not real. So what I've tried to do with Speak Up for Sustainability, with Renewable English, is get real English. One thing I've missed out on is I didn't put subtitles in the first series of Renewable English, which I should have done, uh, because it's maybe, you know, sometimes when I'm interviewing people who are used to doing interviews, but not necessarily for an English learning thing, it's a yeah. bit, it's tricky. But what I also really strive to do, now I did it today, I did um, some interviews today uh, around the Seville, the, where I live. I tried to find as many non-native speakers as possible. 
Okay. Because there are far more non-native speakers of English in the world than there are native speakers. And I want my students to have good role models. I don't want them to think, I want to speak like Harry. I don't want you to speak like me. You know, I don't, I don't speak like me. I, I just, I'm just some tall bearded guy from England. You know, don't speak like me. Speak like you. But yeah. speak like you with confidence. Speak like you with fluency. Yeah. So those kind of aspects, yeah, the, the video side of things. And with Renewable English, with Speak Up for Sustainability, there isn't a huge opportunity for like communication between different students. So I try and set up opportunities for them to, to use things on Padlet where they can use voice recordings, to make videos, to have video projects so they can use their voices. And we have um, a lesson at the end of Speak Up for Sustainability where we can be there, we can chat, and there's plenty of chances for people to, to use their voice. Um, but that's what Renewable English on the Road is for, where I can jump into your classroom and we can all speak together. <laughs> great. Wonderful, Larry. Thank you very much. It's, it's amazing, really. Your ideas, great. Thank you very much. And so my next question, uh, can I move to the next one? Of course. Always. Right. Go ahead. So, Absolutely. Oh, okay. So... We, we talk about the materials and the things that you prepared. They're really, absolutely, they are great. I'm really, you know, the, impressed all of them, the things that you said. But this time, I always ask these questions in the point of the students' part. I mean, like, as students' part. But this time, I change. And here is the question. Have you faced, as a teacher trainer, of course, I'm asking, have you faced a very difficult teacher to transfer your ideas to him or her during your training sessions yes <laughs> yes i i have um there are something i've found with with a lot of english teachers um a lot of teachers in general is they know everything they already know everything they, they don't need to learn anymore <laughs> you know they've they've been to school they've been teaching for a few years they know everything, so you can't really teach them anything at all. So, and they like to, to find, they like to nitpick, they like to find faults in, in what's there. And yeah, there's sometimes people come in with that kind of, that attitude. I've spoken at a lot of conferences and, um, and given lots of teacher training sessions, like a fair number. Usually, teachers are, are really positive and responsive. But you know, occasionally from time to time, there's that one person, and it's usually somebody who maybe wants to be a teacher trainer, but maybe haven't yet started, or they are a teacher trainer, and they don't like your style of training, and they try and find something, and they're just, just like, they try and pick at you. So I try and, I take it on with, with a, a smile on my face. You know, I'm a pretty happy guy. Um, I try to laugh it off. I'm very self-deprecating, so if they say that I've done something wrong, I'm like, absolutely, I am terrible at that. You know, that's a rubbish idea. You're right, it's very boring, you know. So you, rather than, you know, confront that, rather than kind of go at them with the, you know, there's no point, you know, confronting them. You know, people say on, on the internet, don't feed the troll. You know, what that person's looking for is a reaction. They don't, they want... They're looking for something, they're looking for, you know, they're looking for a fight. I never give them that fight. You know, I say, thanks very much for your contribution, you know, or that's a really interesting idea, or yeah, well, maybe we could take that point on board. Um, <laughs> or what I would do, or I say, you know, with my students, it's been successful. So, you know, that's why I'm saying this. Perhaps it won't work with your students. I can't promise that it will. So, you know, those kind of approaches where you can just, you know, give them the, the, the power and give them the, the victory, as it were. You know, they, they, let them win. Let them win. Let them have it. Good job. Oh, wow, wonderful. It's great. It's really, it's really bad. By the way, I really, I really like the, your answer about these questions because I'm sure that, as you mentioned, you have uh, lots of teachers. You faced lots of teachers that were, who were very difficult to understand what you mean, what you transfer to them. Thank you very much, Eri. And no my, problem. Next, my next question is uh, related with you have a project, as I know that I'm like, which under the name of Speak Out for Sustainability project. My next question mm -hmm. is going to be with it. Can you tell us about this uh, Speak Out for Sustainability project and like, what is it? 
and when and how and why did you start this one and can uh, everybody uh, or can anybody join it easily or do you have some criteria to join it anyone can join now the great thing about speak up for sustainability is it's not only aimed at teachers it's also aimed at students so it's like mm -hmm. It's a it's a project from from Pearson. I don't know why my screen keeps going black. I apologize for that, I, by the sometimes way. Sometimes it's going white, black, and white, but it's yeah, okay. I don't, I don't know why it's doing it. Yeah, well, there's, the light's perfect in here. I don't know why it's doing it, but I don't know. It looks like I'm <laughs> at a okay. disco, so at least we can enjoy that. Um, well, so then. sorry. Speak up for sustainability is a, is a Pearson project. So it's with Pearson and BBC Studios. Um, and it came about, um, it was kind of introduced in, we started talking about it in February um, because I've been doing the, the B, Pearson and BBC Live classes, which is another project where we, um, there's, there's a chance for classes from around the world to join and they have one trainer, myself or one of my colleagues, and we nice. teach a class to them and we also do it through webinars. So that's the way I had the kind of connection with Pearson. Uh -huh. I also work for them. Um, a year or so ago. Now, the way it got it, the way it worked out is the idea is this is for for everybody. These yeah. are materials that are there. There are five themes. We're currently on theme three. We're in the first week of theme three. The first theme was carbon footprint. Uh, the second theme was plastic and litter. Uh, this theme is going beyond reduce, reuse, and recycle. So not just reduce, reuse, and recycle, but going beyond that. You know, what else can we do? Um, and the way we've got it is each month we release a set of materials. So we have a vocabulary video, um, we have top tips, we have a guest expert, we have a youth activist that we do an Instagram live with, um, and we have we have a worksheet. So it's all tied together with this worksheet. Now anyone can get this worksheet. So if you just follow uh, Pearson English Learning. Mm -hmm. everything is on there so you can just go to their bio to their link tree it will come down all of the materials that we've created are there and we really encourage learners we encourage teachers to get involved give it to your students let your students get involved and get them to share their videos get them to share their ideas there's a video challenge for every unit where you get to see me wow. being stupid doing something silly um, but also something important for the environment the last one for example was all about doing a litter pick and then making your video and uploading it to um, to Instagram all of the materials as I say are available on Instagram there's also a, a fantastic now I can't take any credit for the, this other idea there's a theme map so at the end of each theme a theme wow. map is released where you can just click on whichever part of it you want. You can have the reading, you can have the, the BBC video, wow. you can have the expert interview, you can have the, the youth interview, you can have uh, the live, the, at the end of the month, we have a live lesson where I, I teach to up to 500 students around the world in like a webinar format. That's also Wonderful. been recorded, so they're all available as well. So there's so many materials. Now, I've created most of these materials with the help of an incredible team, an absolutely amazing team. They've, they've been great the whole way through. And yeah, through this theme map, you can jump in, and the aim is to, to help our students find their voice so we can all speak up for sustainability. And the best thing, theme five, uh, the live lesson, is on the 24th of September, which is the same day as the global climate strike. So oh, we can have the global wow. climate strike, and we can have the live lesson live from a global climate strike. How exciting is that? Wow, it's wonderful, it's great. Uh, can, can, can we join us too? There? Absolutely. All Anyone right. can join. Anyone can join. Check out, um, I post everything on Renewable English, but it's also posted on the Pearson English Learning page. And you can sign up now if you go to register live classes. Um, let me just check now online. So yeah, registerliveclasses.com. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll put it in the chat box now. Sure. Liveclasses.com. If you go there, you can it's register really for fun. all of the live classes coming up. Come along, bring your students, and you get to see me Wonderful. teaching. Join in with me, have a chat, put things on a padlet. It's super fun, super fun. Perfect. It's great. Thank you very much, Eddie, to mention, uh, mention this 
wonderful of the project here. It's really, I really, you know, happy to hear this detail with you. It's great. Uh, this one, the sustainability project. Okay, thank you, Perry. Would you like to add anything else, or can I move? No, 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 please continue. All right, thank you very much, and good job, and keep this good job. And uh, my my next question uh, is uh, about teachers and parents and the community members. Like, how can the teachers best use parents and community members to support their students? What is your idea about it? I think that this is absolutely key to a child to a student's learning um i could really tell in, in like my time when i was teaching in a school i could see the the kids whose parents really cared you know a lot of them send their kids to school uh -huh. the kids go to school they come home why haven't they learned english they go to a bilingual <laughs> school why aren't they perfect in english how like they're in the school they should magically learn but they'll go to school and then they'll go home. And you can really see, so particularly with the, the younger students, I had, I had two students that were seven years old. And they'd always, from the day they were born, whenever they'd watch television, they'd watched it in English. They'd always done that, so all they knew were the cartoons in English, so uh -huh. they understood everything in class. They understood everything. But also their production was incredible. It was absolutely out of this world. Wonderful. And I so often had teacher parents coming up to me saying, should I make my kids watch the TV in English? And it's like, well, obviously, yes. Uh, you know, they need to pay attention. They can ask for your help, but they need to make an in have an interest in their, their kids' learning. Now, for me, the easiest way for parents to do that is to put TV in English from day one. You know, if you suddenly say to a nine-year-old kid, no, no, your cartoons are in English now, well, they're not going to like that. They're not going to understand it. They're not going to react well. Um, for me, bonus. They don't watch television. Go and read a book. Um, so for me, that's like, okay, if they don't want to watch it, that's great. But a lot of parents, the way that they use television is... Stupid. Kid, you go away. I want to look at my phone for a while, or you know, I've got work to do. You know, I'll admit it. I've got a daughter. I do the same. You know, hands up. There are times when you can't be with your kid the whole time, so it is like, go on, put some cartoons on. There are things that I need to do. Um, so for me, that's the absolute easiest way. But getting them interested, having activities, you know, having after-school activities, after-class activities, and inviting the parents to come along. Having this, the parents come along to a class. Now, I know as a teacher, the first time that happened, I absolutely was very nervous. I almost used some very bad language there. I was <laughs> terrified, you know. They were like, oh, it's all right. The parents are going to come along to the class. I was like, what do you mean? Well, they want to see what the kids are doing. And I know that it kind of puts an extra pressure on the lesson isn't natural. But the parents get to see what what's happening the parents get to see what the kids are doing and in that way you can connect with the parents i think communication with the parents is really mm -hmm. important you know parent teacher days are so important and get them in as early as possible in the year you know don't wait till the end and then okay your son was rubbish this year he didn't pay any attention no that's no good that's no use i say try and get one in nice and early after a couple of months bam there you go straight in there couple of months, have a quick word with the parents. It doesn't have to be face to face. It can be a quick Zoom meeting, you know? I see. There you go, just a quick thing. This is what I see your student, your son is doing, your daughter is doing. <laughs> This is a way that you can, you can work on that at home. I see, so wonderful. Thank you very much, Harry. Thank you very much for this nice and useful and great suggestions about it. It's wonderful. Thank you very much. So, Uh, my next question is, uh, what new thing should teachers add to what they teach? This is a, a, a lovely question. Anything they've learned. Now, I read recently, I can't remember who the quote was from, but it said, if you're teaching the same thing now that you were teaching five years ago, either the system's broken or you're broken. So I think... Every different teacher has a different skill set. There are some teachers that are amazing with technology. I see. But sometimes they use too much technology. And that teacher, what they need to do is go back to a more traditional classroom. And the new thing they need to use is a game with the board. 
Yeah, a new thing they need to... So I think the key isn't necessarily what thing they need to add to what they do, but what can they learn to then add to their class? Because every teacher's different. Every class is different. So I really encourage teachers to continue developing. Go out there, look for, look for these different things, look for things that you can add to your classroom and add them in that way. So maybe, it's, maybe it is a new thing of tech. Maybe it's a Padlet. Maybe it's um, something they've got from Genially. Maybe it's uh, you know, any of these wonderful apps. Maybe it's a Blookit. Maybe it's Kahoot. Maybe any of those. Or maybe it's just simply going on, reading a blog online about some old school lessons, old school games that you can introduce to your class. So I see. just learn something new and add that. Great. Thank you, Eric. Thank you very much. So next question is about uh, the key skills. So what do you think are the key skills you will need or actually we will need in the future? I think for me, now it's one that I've always been a bit obsessed with as a teacher. Um, the absolute key for me is, is public speaking and presentations. Um, I get so frustrated when students do a presentation, well not even students, just anyone. Anyone in any meeting, anywhere, English, Spanish, French, German, Turkish, when they sit behind a PowerPoint and they read the PowerPoint. It's like, I can read, mate. It's all good. I'm, I'm good at reading. That's how I've got this far in life. Don't sit there and read me a PowerPoint. I think that an absolutely vital skill is that the way of, of presenting, the way of taking an idea and giving it to, to a classroom, to, to other people, to a business, um, and doing so without simply reading it from, from a PowerPoint. I mean, the, mm -hmm. using a PowerPoint, great. You know, PowerPoints are important. People need to use them. Um, they do have those kind of prompts on there. But the, as I say, the actual skill of presenting and speaking in public is so important. And I think that's something that the, the pandemic has actually helped. This, uh -huh. this idea of, of kind of giving these presentations, because when we do it online, when we do it, it's so much easier. You're not standing there in front of 10, 15, 20 people with their eyes staring at you. You know, you can take that step and you can even say for the, the shyer students, everybody else, turn off your cameras. And they can be there. They're on their own in that moment. And that way they can be absolutely free. Um, they can be, they can just let themselves go. Um, Someone just asked a great question there. Yeah, there's what, a question um, here. What do you do when you have C1 students who are trying to be trying fluent? To yeah, what I think with that is it's, that's all about confidence. It's all about confidence and it's all about getting them to push themselves and put themselves into um, situations that they're maybe not used to. Um, I have a, a great friend, Jesse Swede. Um, you can find him, the Swede Academy. Um, and he does the Eagle Method. Um, and the way he, he teaches is it's all about this confidence and it's all about this um, practicing um, and looking for the areas that you're trying to work on and, and really focusing on those. And it is dedication. You know, a C1 student who's trying to be fluent, they've gone through all the motions. They know the grammar. They know the vocabulary. They need to do it also outside of class. You know, they can't Definitely. just come to class and do that because you still have to teach other grammar, you still have to teach other vocabulary. They need to take it outside of class. And one key thing that, that Jesse talks about that I completely agree with, think in whatever language you're going for. Think in English. You know, what I do, the one thing I kind of switched in my mentality for learning Spanish was my inner monologue, whenever I'm thinking of, you know, a conversation I'm going to have, you know, when I was thinking of, of what we were going to talk about, when I was thinking, I thought of my answers in Spanish. So I was trying to naturally kind of force myself to think in Spanish. Even when I'm thinking, you know, I'm in the shower or whatever, I'm like, I'm going to ring my mum and dad later. What am I going to talk about? And I think about the different things, but I think of it in Spanish. Um, even my parents speak a bit of Spanish. You know, I've lived here for 11 years now, so they, they, they visit regularly. Um, my mum's pretty good. My, my dad, not so great. Um, it's all right, they don't have Instagram, so they won't know. Um, but yeah, I think that, that side of things is, is really important, that the kind of thinking, that step of making yourself think in English and forcing yourself to practice. I see. 
Thank you very much for both uh, answers for my questions and the English teachers of the world's question. Thank you, Harry. And Harry, no problem. What is, uh, what is the single the greatest truth that you think a language teacher should be aware of? Listen to your students. I don't think just language teachers, I think every teacher. Listen to your students. Listen actively, listen to everything they have to say. Don't just listen to what they're saying. Listen to what they have to say. You know, it's, you don't just listen, ah, you made a mistake there. No, listen to their passions. Listen to, to what they want to do in life. You know, I've had people come up to me saying, oh, I've got this private student. I just I don't know what to do with him. I've done this. I've gone through this book. I've gone through that book. And he's like, oh, what's he interested in? Oh, all he ever talks about is tennis. Well, here's an idea. Why don't you base your lesson around tennis? Or I had, um, you know, a few years back, oh, I can't control my class. I've got a class of only boys. And all they ever do is talk. About Hello? Huh. Ah, okay, now I can hear you. You know, somebody who, who was saying, yeah, they're not interested in anything. They only ever talk about Fortnite. Well, you design a lesson on Fortnite. They design a lesson on Fortnite. They find a streamer. Exactly. They watch that streamer playing Fortnite in English. Their homework that day is to go home and watch. I don't, I don't know anyone who plays Fortnite because I haven't paid attention recently. But anyway, <laughs> go home and do that. Watch a gamer online. Watch a Twitch streamer playing Fortnite. That's your homework. And they're like, my homework is to watch someone playing Fortnite? Yes, but they're watching it in English. So, so that for me, listen to your students. 100% the most important thing. I see. Thank you very much, Harry. It's really a wonderful answer for the question. Really, I do the same thing. For example, you know, you mentioned you mentioned about the game. You mentioned the games, like you know, the my my students, they 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 they're crazy about uh, playing LOL, League of Legends. Maybe you heard about mm -hmm. it. At first, I had no idea it's what is that game because I and I couldn't talk with them. And after that, I download the game to my computer and I started playing League of Legends. And the next day, you know, I went to the class and I asked. Hey, who is your what? Who is your? I mean, like the player. What character do you choose? For example, and I just told them a kind of name of the characters, and they became like, "Wow, the teacher is playing this game." Can I ask this question to you? Then, do you like this character? This is my character, and you know, you know, maybe we talked at least, you know, one one whole lesson. We talk in English, and we talk in the, with the game, but by the help yeah. of the game. They, you know, they push themselves to talk in English. That was wonderful. Yeah. Um, the, one, of, one person asked what my favorite les level to teach was. I, I, I genuinely don't have a favorite level. Um, I, I wish I could answer that question, but it depends on my energy. It depends on my mood. I think early on in the day, I love teaching kids. I love it. I love the energy they provide. Um, but then later on, when I'm a bit more mellow, I like teaching teenagers. You know, it all depends on my mood. I love, I, I just, I love teaching. I really love teaching. Um, I don't fear teenagers, though. A lot of people do. I don't really fear them. Um, I quite enjoy my teen classes <laughs> if they're good. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> it's really, it's, 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 uh, Chilingiro who says that's why, that's the reason why we all know Pop G, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, thank you. Not a fan of C1, I can understand. <laughs> <laughs> I hate C1. Oh, nice, nice answer, thank you. All right, so I really wonder what are you going to say to these questions because when I ask these questions, you know, the, all the, te the teachers, the educators, or whoever they have joined so far, they have really interesting ideas. Here is the question. If you could have one superpower to use in the classroom, what would it be and how would it help? Okay, well, there's, I'm, I'm going to stay. I'm going to go with two. Sorry, one of them I got, which is fine. The ability to mute the class. Online teaching was great for that. Suddenly, bam! There we go. I've got the power. And the problem is now when you go back to a face-to-face -face classroom, it's like, where's the mute button? Where's the mute button? There is button? no mute button. You um, can't do that. 
<laughs> so yeah, um, obviously that's a, that's a bit of a joke, a t- tongue-in-cheek one there. Um, what superpower would it be? Well, it would be for students to understand something the, and, and learn it the first time I've said it. You know, there's, I remember as a, when I was a, a new teacher, you know, we, we'd teach something one day and then the next day we'd go back and the students wouldn't know. You'd be like, I taught you this in the last class. Come on. And you don't realise that, you know what? It doesn't just automatically stick there. So that would be my superpower. That as soon as I've taught it, it's in my students' heads. You know, everything I say, they can then take and repeat. Because I think that would be amazing because you'd never have to go over anything again. <laughs> You're like, right. <laughs> textbooks, textbooks wouldn't always start with the present tenses. Every time, no matter what level. Let's review the present tenses. No, <laughs> exactly. let's not do that. That's so boring. But, you know, students need to learn it again and again and again and again and again. So that would be my superpower. What I teach goes in and stays there. Wonderful. There is uh, here is another question. Thank you very much, Sherry, for this fun. But there, another question: Do you use the news with your more advanced students? If so, how? Yeah, um, especially environmental news, um, as you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. I like to have like I have like a, a news, not a news hour, but a news section of the class. And every day, a different student brings in a different article of news related to the environment they've found. And I like them to, to bring it into the classroom and tell the class what it's about, say about two new words that they've found in it and tell the class what those two new words are and have those kind of five, 10 minutes for them to present that to the class. And again, it's that way that they're paraphrasing. It's that way that they're, they're mediating and, and helping the, the other students you know, come to terms with this new thing. I like them to find something positive as well. So there's a lot of people that come in, oh, this person has discovered an enzyme that can break down bacteria. And you're like, enzyme, break down, yeah. bacteria, psh, psh, psh. <laughs> three words in a row, which is incredible. It's a great one, really. I really like it. And there is another, I think, comment here. Azra says, uh, you will enjoy it as well. Didn't know how to play it and throw the game. Other children are surprised to know I am teacher teaching with my students. He said, thank you. Thank you. And yes, let's move to the next question. So what advice, uh, Harry, would you give to a new teacher who asks you, what is the best way for me to keep growing as a teacher? Uh, firstly, you don't know everything. I remember when I first got my, my, my CELTA, um, I was 23. I was very confident. I got the, the highest grade in the class. I did really well. It was brilliant. I loved it. I was like, I'm a natural. I know how to do this. Into the class, I'm like, I know everything. I know everything. I'm so amazing. And I got in there and I was like, right then, the present perfect. I don't really know what that is or how to teach it. Um, <laughs> so that thing, when you're a new teacher, know that you don't know everything, but still have that confidence. Go into your classes with that confidence. Um, but be honest with your students. Be honest with your students. And if you don't know an answer to something, tell them you don't know. I don't, I don't know, I'll do some research and I'll get back to you. You know, you can't automatically know everything. Not everyone knows everything. You know, if you've got a history teacher, they don't know all of history. You know, all of history goes back a really long way. They can't know everything. So I think be aware of, of what you don't know and look for ways that you can find out to understand that. And learn from other teachers. I learned from Every other teacher, if I observe a lesson, I learn from a teacher. Now, if that's a new teacher, an experienced teacher, be open-minded to learning from, from everybody. Because you can also learn from your, from your students. You know, be open-minded. You can learn from everybody. You can learn from anybody. So be ready to accept new knowledge. Be ready to accept these, these new things from, from anyone and everyone. I see. There is, a, there is a question. Thank you very much, by the Harry. And there was a question, and I missed the question. Uh, she was asking, what if the icebreakers uh, didn't break the ice? So it's something written there. Can you see it? It's just about it. I yeah. Can't... 
Yeah, well, okay. it's, it's gone funny. The colour's gone a bit funny there on mine. And what do you do to overcome that if the icebreakers don't break the ice? Um, well, I'll, I've got a whole host of, like, games and activities and ideas up my sleeve. So if one doesn't work, I use another one. I use another one. I use another <laughs> one. For me, the first maybe two or three classes, for me, they're not in any way about... English. They're not about learning the grammar. They're not about learning the vocabulary. They're not about, they're about getting to know your students. So just taking that time and, and not panicking, you know, oh no, I need to get into the book. I need to start the book. No, you don't. Take that first class, spend the whole time um, getting to know your students. Ask them to tell you about themselves. If they can't do it in English, Ask them to do it in their, their mother tongue, you know, ask them to do it what they can in English and a bit in their own language. It's all about them feeling confident and comfortable with you. If they can't feel confident and comfortable with you, then, then the whole year is going to be difficult. And it's all about investing that time, that first class and that, I'd even say the second class, just with these icebreakers, these getting to know you games and ideas and activities. And the first class, or at least the first class and a half, doing these fun things that we can all do together, we can all have fun in the classroom, and just be like, so you can build that confidence with them, build the rapport, get to know them. That way, later down the line, I don't know, maybe you'll look in the book and you'll say, I don't know, uh, Pakitsa, well I know that you love knitting, so this thing here is about knitting, why don't you tell us? So you can then personalise it, it's, it's really important to invest that time in the, in the students. I see. And also, you invest your time in them. Let them know about you. They want to know about you. You know, be an open book with them. Hi, I'm Harry. I'm married to the most beautiful woman in the world. Her name's Hema. She's a photographer. She's also a dancer. I have a daughter called Alethea. She's incredible. She's hilarious. You know, all of these things. Open up. Let them know you. Because if you don't know each other on a personal level, then you're, you know, it's going to be more difficult. Wonderful. Thank you. Great, Harry. And really amazing ideas. You would be an amazing teacher someday. <laughs> oh, good, great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> nice comments. Okay. And Harry, so just a couple questions left, by the way. The time flies, you know. Uh, I really didn't understand how time passes because this the things that... I talk a really... lot. No, I no, wonderful. Lot. Wonderful. And I really love it. And I'm sure that all the people who listen to, they all love it, love it too. And next question. I know that you use lots of, uh, lots of useful uh, websites, but I'm sure that you have some uh, very really uh, key websites that you use mostly. So what are your five websites to suggest to use in teaching? Well, number one, really? renewableenglish.com. <laughs> Yeah, all right, wonderful. <laughs> that was an obvious one, wasn't it? That was a really obvious yeah. one. Um, number two, um, as far as websites go, uh, uh, eltsustainable.org is really good. There are so many materials on there for, for sustainability classrooms and so on and so forth. Abs I, love, I love it. It's, it's really good for me. It, it's helped me a lot. Um, now, this one's a bit of a cop-out, but Facebook... There's so much in Facebook. There are so many different areas that you can find with, with places that can help you with materials. Um, I love ELT Footprint on Facebook, which has lots oh, of ideas for sustainable awesome. materials. Absolutely great. But there are so many, and there are ways of connecting. There's, there's my virtual classroom, I think it's called, where you can connect with classes across the globe. That way you can learn about culture. So within Facebook, there are more, like there are so many groups, but I'm going to use Facebook as my third one. Um, really do use it. Don't, don't forget about it. It's, um, it's, an, amazing, it's an amazing tool. Um, ESL Printables is great. This, this for me was the one that really started me on the path to believing in myself as a materials writer. Um, because that was where you can post your own materials and they can be, you know, other people see if they like them and, you know, you get the validation from it. But also, once somebody downloads your stuff, you can download other people's stuff. Stop. And the great thing about other people's stuff is you don't have to do it. 
So you've got, yeah. there's materials there for absolutely yeah. everything, absolutely everything. So um, I think that's really important one. Uh, number five, now again, this is, is a bit of a cop out again, but Instagram. Instagram for teaching, and, but also for learners. It's a way for you to connect with learners. Um, if you don't want them to see your personal stuff, which I completely understand, I don't really, I don't have any students on my personal Instagram. I don't use my personal Instagram either, but have a teaching one and have a, um, have one for, for yourself. And yet yeah, use it and look at other people's materials. They're, they're so, so good. And of course, Creative <laughs> English Facebook group. I mean, obviously, obviously. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Don't forget to follow and Renewable English Facebook group. Of course, Renewable English Facebook group too. Thank you very much, Jerry, for this one, really. And only two questions left. And thanks for this useful. And uh, I'm sure that the, all the pages that you mentioned, they are all useful. And and I'm sure that we are going to use them. We are going to check them. And I'm sure we will find lots of useful materials for us and for our students. Thanks. And last two questions. Here, the first one. What for you? What will uh, be the 2021 and 2020 school year look like? I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that uh, there'll be more renewable English on the road. So I'll be going around and visiting more schools, visiting more people online uh, and trying to get the message across about sustainability. Um, I'm hoping there's a return to the classrooms across the globe. Because while there are benefits to, to online teaching and distance learning, there's nothing the same as being in the classroom with your students, having that face-to-face -face connection. There's nothing quite like it. So I, that's what my big hope um, for the coming year. Um, and yeah, I will have my classes. I'm, I'm very lucky this year. I've, I only have three classes and they're all classes that I have selected. So I have one online class, I have one hybrid class and I have one face-to-face -face class. One of them's a kid's class, one's a teen's class, one's an adult class, because being a teacher trainer, I want to stay involved in all of these different areas, and yeah, I want to exactly. practice what I preach. Yeah. You know, I don't want to go to someone and say, this is a great activity that I've never used in my classroom. I don't think that's fair. <laughs> um, so for, for me, I'm hoping that it's going to be visiting more people, getting to know more people, and series two of Renewable English comes out in September, And it's super exciting. I'm really excited. It's all about the sustainable development goals. So each week, Wonderful. so every Thursday, we have the live lesson. It's at five o'clock Spanish time, six o'clock Turkish time. Um, that's, I'm trying to think of the other times. Uh, 10.30 Indian time. And anyway. Um, yeah, the so way that's, the teacher um, checked them. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I've, I've got a list of them somewhere. So that's coming out and it's all, all about the sustainable development goals. So we're looking at the UN sustainable development goals. So there will be 17 classes each week. We'll be doing one, one different one each week. So I'm really excited about that. That's basically September until the end of January. So that's my school year. But my main hope, my main focus is that that people are back in the classroom with their, with their students. That's what I hope for. Wonderful. Thank you very much. And Nilgün says, I really appreciate your concern about sustainability. It was nice to listen to you, Harry. Yeah, thank you. <coughs> yeah, it's really, it was wonderful. Okay, here is the last question. Ready for it? And the most difficult one. Yeah, here with it. What is your motto? Oh... <laughs> um, I'd like to say teach green is one of my big mottos to always teach green um, I'd say that's a big motto but also always listen for me even more than you know my area is sustainability is environmentalism so that side of me is teach green and think green like that's, that's my but in general As a, as a teacher, as a teacher trainer, always listen. Always listen. Listen to your students. Listen to your co-workers. Listen to the parents. Listen to everybody because unless you're listening to them, you can't teach what they need to learn. 
You, you are the one with the power to go into the classroom and teach. But don't go in there with the mindset of, right, today is the third conditional, so we are going to teach the third conditional. Yeah, you need to teach what's in the book, but you need to listen to students, you need to know what their, their concerns are, and you need to adapt to them. You know, you're there to help them. You're not there to tell them what you think they need to know. Nice. You need to know what they need to know. So always listen. Okay. That was a long yeah. motto. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. We got the point. The teach green and always listen. These are the two mottos that you are using. It wonderful. All right, Terry. So that's all my questions. And I asked all of them and I, I had perfect answers. So before we are coming almost end of the session. So before we end of our session, live session, would you like to add something else to the end? Um, I want to say firstly a huge thanks to you for inviting me um, to be part of your 58th session. It's now my new favorite number. Um, <laughs> uh, it's been absolutely great. I love your questions. Um, I think that you've asked some really important questions. So a big thank you to you. Um, no. But most importantly, obviously, a big thank you to everybody who's come along and, and brought their questions, uh, brought their questions to the, the session. And please do look out for renewable English. And of course, speak up for sustainability. Both of them are all over the internet. You know, I'm, I'm trying to get Greta on. So every day on Twitter, I'm asking her. I'm up to day 78 at the moment. She hasn't responded yet. But I will keep going. Never give up. Um, yeah. Never, never, never say die. So, yeah, thank you everyone for coming along. And please do check out Renewable English. And if you have any questions, You can send me a message on Instagram, on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on Twitter, or you can email me at harry at renewableenglish.com. Perfect, Harry. <laughs> Wonderful. And thank you very much. And I would like to say before end, thank you very much again, Harry, uh, to being with us. And it was a great to listen to. It was a joyful session. And we learned lots of things from you. And also, I would like to say one more huge thank you to give this chance to us to listen, to learn, to listen to your suggestions and your wonderful ideas about sustainability, about renewable English or the projects. They were really awesome. And also, I would like to say thank you to all the people who come and listen and have a chance to listen to Harry. I'm sure that they have learned lots of things because it was a brilliant session. And that's all. And I would like to say one more time... <laughs> All right, <laughs> and we will see each other next week uh, on the same day, on the sa at the same time as you know at Teacher Talks time. We have we will have another uh, educator like Harry Waters, and he was with us. And that's all for tonight. And I would like to say also good evening, good night, good morning, wherever you are. And if you are here, we are here. If you are not here, we will be here again. Don't worry. <laughs> so. That's all for, for tonight. Thank you very much, Sherry, and thank you, others. See you next time. Bye-bye. Until next time, take bye -bye. care. Peace, everybody. And take stay, it easy, stay. everyone. Bye.